welcome back to my channel. Um, today is going to be the last and final video for the Selena crop jacket. I am in the middle of making two right now. This is the first one uh, from my orders that I've gotten in from you guys. Um, so yeah, I've already cut out some of the pattern pieces. As you can see, I used the patterns from my um, from the first video, you know, and I was showing you how to do the patterns. So I have my two for the front and then the one in the back. I will show how I'm going to pin these and, and sew them in a moment. Um, I'm just showing at the right now how I'm doing the sleeve. Again, I'm following the uh, selvage. I don't know if you can see it in this video, but it's right there. And I'm having my sleeve aligned with the selvage. Let's pretend that this crease in the middle is like the arrow, like in those store-bought patterns. And I'm just gonna have that parallel with the selvage. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin that. And if you're new to sewing or you still have this habit, I don't use a whole lot of pins on my patterns. Um, I, I find that a lot of new uh, people that are learning how to do it just like outline the whole thing in pins and that's not really needed. I notice that in a lot of my classes with people that are learning to sew, they like to over pin things and you really don't. Um, I would just put it like three to every side. Um, yeah, so see I didn't put, you don't have to put that many. So I'm gonna pin this and then I'm going to cut out, I'm gonna measure out with a half inch seam allowance and I'm gonna cut two of these, which is already folded together. So once I cut one time, then I'll have two pieces and then I'll go over the pinning and then putting everything together. Also, um, I didn't mention this in the first video, but I will mention it now because we're on the topic of the crop jacket. I will show you how to do some real cheap, inexpensive shoulder pads because her jacket does have shoulder pads. I unfortunately don't know how to do like that raised pointy shoulder like hers kind of is. Um, that's why I still need to research and practice on like building structures like that within the shoulder. But even with just a normal shoulder pad, it'll still give it that nice rounded appearance and a little bit more, you know, professional, uh, expensive looking for the crop jacket. So let me go ahead and cut this out, pin them together, and then I'll be right back. So here I am back in my studio and not the kitchen. Okay, so we're starting to assemble the body of the jacket. Um, I went ahead and I pinned one side for you so you can kind of see since, you know, there's not really notches or stuff that I put in my pattern. Like, I know how it goes, but so that way it doesn't confuse you. So the back is the whole piece that was cut on the fold, and then the front consists of these two parts. All we're going to do first is pin this side pin up here and then when we place this we want to put this right on the edge over here okay so same thing let me see if I can do this with one hand and you know now this won't take a lot of time but just remember because this is velvet velvet has a nap things are gonna wanna like not lay right or they're gonna feel like they can move back and forth just because they're on that the, the pile or you know that like that, that carpety feeling that velvet has of, I mean, in layman's terms, how I can best describe it, but you're just going to want to kind of mess with it. See how right here it starts to bunch up. So like, as you're placing this on there, you kind of want to just keep moving and, and folding thing, unfolding things out of place because stuff will start bunching up. And then if it's too much down there, then you need to pull it. So just do that. And then we're going to uh, I'll, I'll fix that right now, but just for this video, we're going to stitch half an inch down. So from here to here, you know, from here to here, half an inch. If at this point, if you have a serger like I do, oh my God, here, let me cover my, my freaking dirty studio. Okay. Yeah. My studio is in a garage. It's a mess. But anyways, if you have a serger like I do, I'm going to go and then I'm going to go over the allowance part with our machine 
and I'll show you what it looks like when you do it with a serger if you're not familiar with that. Or, as I have on my other machine here, if your machine is capable of doing uh, an overlock stitch like mine is here, you can also do something like that um, on the edge of the allowance after you're done sewing it. Just, um, just to help clean it up on the edges or, you know, if you have a really good serger, you can just serge the whole thing right now without even doing the straight stitch. It's up to you. That's just what I'm accustomed to. Um, you know, sewing it first and then going over the edge with the, the serger. I just think it looks more clean and professional. And then after that, then we're going to take it to the mannequin. And then we're just going to go ahead and look over what errors were in the pattern. How can we correct that before we start sewing other things, adding in the sleeves. But I will show that once I'm done here. So let me go ahead and sew all this and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. All right, so we're gonna put, either you're gonna put this on yourself or you're gonna put this on your mannequin like I have. Um, and again, here's where we just kind of like smooth out things, check for uh, errors and stuff like that. Let me turn this around. Okay. So, as you can see here, let me see if you can just see this, what we need to correct. Okay, so, if you can see, what's the best way to show this? Okay, here we go. So, see how the front meets here, but it's, it's at a, it's, it's weird, it's a strange angle. It should be smooth from like here, and then kind of blend in the same way around. Because right here, it's, it's, it's too sharp. It should be more rounded out, like a regular, you know, t-shirt, collar, or whatever. So now I'm going to go, and I'm going to start from one side. Let me see where. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of, like, cut it and blend it. Let's see. Okay, here we go. That's a better angle. Just to kind of round it out and lower the back neckline ever so slightly. And just kind of meet that part right there. Round it out. So that's a little bit better there. That's, a, that's an improvement. So that's what we're doing here. So that's much better. Have to correct that. And then, oh, remember what I was telling you. So have your pins nearby when, when you're doing this, when you're having your, your fitting. You, I mean, there's no way, it's, it's really hard to just get it perfectly fitting the right try without ever having a fitting. Um, so I mean, so if you ever have like the point with the seamstress, don't skip the fittings and then it's their fault when it doesn't fit you. That's not their fault, okay? So here, I'm just going to do my little closure for now, so this doesn't open, so I'm going to pin the front shut, and then we will go and correct this in a little bit. But remember how I told you in the first video that we're going to have to do darts in the back at some point, and I would rather do that when we have the fitting? Well, here, here is why, okay, so... If I turn this again, see how the center seam is not in the center in between this space here? If you have a re another type of mannequin, it'll have a center seam on the side. And I always use that as a guide so that way I know the clothes are uh, equal or the everything's you know in right proportions or not. So right now it's, it's too far out. It should be more back towards the middle, right here. And that's because we don't have the darts yet. So now, we're gonna have to do our darts. So get a pin, and now that you've already pinned the front, please don't forget to pin the front. Now if you're doing this by yourself, um, have a friend help you. Or, you know, just it's gonna be one of those things where you have to take it on, Fix it, put it back on, take it off, put it back, fix it. It's stuff like that. I do have to do that sometimes when I'm by myself. So it's a little more annoying, but it, it you will get to that part where you have it perfectly. 
So, I'm just going to find my center real quick. Just, just like the, the rough center. Um, in fact, you know what? What you should do is just measure it from seam to seam. Okay. So yeah, I was right on the money. So it's about right there, the center. So now from that center, you can easily space a dart on this side and a dart on this side. Okay. So I know my center is this one right here where the head of the pin is. So I want to start bringing in, and I'm looking at this right side, and as much as I pull it in, when I see it smack dab in the middle, that's how much I know my dart is going to have to be in. So right now, I'm going to go, and again, this is different for everybody, for every body type. So this, this, is, this is on you right here. You have to fit this on yourself or your friend or whoever you're making it for to make sure that you have it absolutely perfect. You know what I mean? That's quite a bit of slack there, but that's okay because, again, this is the fitting and this is where we correct more of our errors or, um, or need to make slight adjustments. So I'm going to pull this again, and I'm looking on this side, same, same thing, right? Now since I am doing this on a mannequin, it does make it a little bit easier, but Again, you can do it by yourself. It's not impossible. It's just a, a little more work into it. Okay, let me put my last needle. Okay, so right now, both my side seams are in between that line. It's pretty good. So we're just going to do some comparisons because we obviously can't sew it like this because right now it's pinned where the right side's facing out. We're going to have to do this on the inside. This is where we just kind of like take notes and everything. So from the center, I'm going to go to where the beginning of this fold, this big pinch starts. So it's three inches in on mine. On yours, it may or may not be the same. So three inches in from the center, so you want to take a note, a mental note of that. And then how high did I go? Six inches high. So let me write that down. Let me see, where do I have a pin? And let's see, how many inches did I pinch off for this dart? So one and a quarter on one side, but remember, when, when you, oops, so it's one and a quarter on one side, but this whole thing is not one and a quarter. What's one, what's one plus, 1.25 plus 1.25, well that's 250, right? So in total, this dart is two and a half inches that's being pulled in. So I'm going to leave it at that. And again, here, there may be some further adjustments, but first things first, let's get these darts in. So 1.25. I have my notes for that. So when I know when I go back in and I take this off and I have it reversed, I'm going to keep my center, my center point pin here. And then from the inside, I know I'm going to measure in 3 inches mark, 6 inches high mark, and then I'm going to pinch that whole area in about two and a half inches until I get to this top part and then sew it like a little right triangle, okay? Now let's talk about this little area right here. Again, more adjustments. So here's a little bit easier now that it's in the center point. I, I would rather you do the darts here first to center that out on the sides before you start pulling in on the side because now you're just trying to adjust something that's already crooked instead of adjusting it to be straight first and then fixing it again for the, the center seam. So here I have some extra fabric that I'm just going to pinch off and if you do this 
you'll notice that the armhole gets smaller. So with that adjustment, I'm going to go have to go back in there after I sew this and remeasure my armhole to whatever. Remember, whatever measurement that is for you, I'm going to remeasure the circumference of that, and then if I need to, I'll cut the arm out hole more. Or leave it. I mean, it, it really depends. Okay, so that's that's good there. Now let's check for the shoulders. Let me turn this way. Okay. So as you can see here, when I pull this up, it does like that. That's too much slack already. So what I'm going to do here is get another pin and pinch all that excess right there. And I'm going to pin it straight. There we go. So now that's a good fit at the shoulders. I'll do the same thing on this side so it's all even. Again, I would measure this out. And just for your notes, so I pinched an inch up here at the end of the shoulder. So I'll put that in there. Okay. This is all fitting issues that we're taking care of at this moment. I'm sorry, it's like super hot in my garage. The hair is crazy. I'm all sweaty. It's all good. Don't don't mind me in the Texas heat. Okay, so everything is looking fine here. Now let's address the front. Now initially when I did the pattern, I wanted it to pin somewhere a little bit past the center, like perhaps like right here. Because right now, if I pull it really tight, I'm going to have the closure way over here when I want the closure to be somewhere about there. So, I'm going to just pull one side over, and I'm going to pin it. Oh, hold on. I just got this mannequin. I'm getting used to it. So I have to pin things sideways. I can't pin them like right into it. So now I'm going to cut a little triangle off. I'm going to cut it to the center because I don't need all this extra slack on one side because when it's pinned, you're going to see the part that doesn't have the button on the other side once it's wrapped. It's going to be like doing a little dangly thing on the corner and I don't like that. So I just cut it off. So now it looks like this, right? And then I still have this long piece. So I'm just going to trim this a little bit more. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to pull this over because this was a little bit too, too long for my liking. So remember, I want to pin somewhere about here. And right now this thing is like way over here. So I'm going to, and if you need to do this like on a paper pattern first, just to kind of like mess with it or do like a, a mock version of this, you may see how I'm just kind of like, I cut it off and then I'm blending it back into the front opening of this. So see, I cut off this much. Let me see if I can show you. I cut off just that much. See, but I'm like really angle about that. I want it to close as much in the center as possible. So now I can come over and I'm going to have it button. Where's my pin? About right here. And then I'll probably cut this one too and blend it. If you can see that it's kind of squared off right now because I had cut it. I'll just cut it to blend it a little bit. Uh, where's the pin? So that's what I'm going to do for now. So go ahead and do, uh, do your adjustments. And then once you have all the adjustments corrected and fixed, yeah, I got to fix that. Then we'll do the sleeves 
and then I'll go over the buttonholes and the shoulder pads. So I just wanted to go over some things here. Um, as I said, I believe in the previous um, scene or clip of this video, um, you know, you do your you do your fitting and then you figure out how much more you need to take in and all that. I did go over the darts, which I did put in the back of the jacket. I switched it to this mannequin. While it is a little bit smaller than the other one, I, I just I have to be able to pin directly into it and not to the side. So it's kind of irritating me on my other mannequin. But um, but it's okay even if it comes out like a little bit small for this project for this type of fabric because it is stretchy. You don't want the jacket to be loose at all. It needs to be snug or slightly tight, and it does stretch. So um, again, keep that in mind. Don't freak out if it gets a little. If it looks a little small or fits tight, that, that's kind of what we're aiming for here. So, um, <clears throat> just a couple things. The things you might encounter, which I did. Um, now, I do want to say this. For me, I usually don't do a muslin mock-up because I can correct it with the actual fabric and I, I never really make errors, you know what I mean? But Going through these things that I'm about to walk you through, I would suggest, and I will put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video, but I'll say it again now, I will suggest if this is your first project, um, definitely do a muslin mock-up of this, so that way you can make all your errors, all your your fitting, your alterations on it, you know, chop off the excess, iron it, lie it flat, transfer it back to a paper pattern, and then cut it out of your actual fabric so that way you don't waste. Because if you're new to sewing and, and you're new to taking on a project like this, you will make a lot of mistakes and you definitely don't want to uh, waste fabric, you know what I mean? So as I was saying in the beginning, um, it, it was a little bit crossing over too much at the top and I wanted to show a little bit more chest. So I did come in with my... And remember, like, this came over way over here. It was like a long triangle. So I had cut it down the center. And then from that tip, I cut it at a diagonal. And I blended it back with the neckline. Same thing here. I went to a part here. Let's say it was right here. And I cut it and I blended it back in with the neckline straight. So I do like the way this looks now. If I pin it. I, I like how it's deep like that. That's what I like. That's what we want. Now, um, if in the previous clip of this, I needed to take it in here an inch, which I already have. All the, all the alterations are complete on this. But since you, I took it in an inch here, as you can see, the armhole now gets smaller. So you're going to have to go back to your measurement chart, and you're going to have to re-measure the armhole. And it will be smaller, so now you have to cut it out again and make it big. I already did it on this side. So on the uh, client's measurements, her arm hold was 21 inches. And after I was done with all the alterations here at the shoulder and at the side, the arm hold measured 16 and a half inches. So it did shrink it down quite a bit. So this is what I did. Um, again, if you're doing this without a mannequin, I would suggest at this point definitely maybe try and have someone help you. But this is how I, I, I remedy things like this. So I came down. Let me go back. I'm sorry to cut this one out. So let me go back to the one I haven't cut out yet. That's how this armhole is, is, is much smaller. It, it, it definitely will not work because our sleeve, the sleeve ones, once I sew the sleeve together, that circumference will be 21 inches. So they got to match. So what I did is I, I measured down, uh, let's see, where am I, two inches, and that's where this pin is right here. If you can see it, it has a yellow um, ball on top. So I measured down two inches. And this is what I'm doing. So I come down two inches. I can't cut past the needle, obviously, it's stopping me. And then I'm going to cut a little bit forward. This is why definitely I would advise you to do this with a muslin mock-up 
because I can do this freehand, like I do this all the time, and I know it'll definitely throw someone off who is not a seasoned seamstress who can eyeball this type of stuff, and then see how this is kind of like squared off, so I'm just going to cut that off and just round it here. So see now my arm holds bigger. So let's see where we're at. Again, when you make stuff like this, you, you gotta you gotta double and triple check, especially if you want this to come out right. You can't rush these things. You have to take your time. So we went from 16 and a half to we're at 19 and a half. So let me try and chop down a little more. We need to get it to 21. And every time I cut it, I just kind of blend it back to be as, as symmetrical and, and neat as possible. So we're at 19 and a half. Yeah, and this is totally what I do all the time. Unless I'm doing a pattern that I know, like for my original designs, I reuse and I reuse. Then that's when I definitely do mock-ups. So that way I know my patterns are 100% accurate. Okay, now I'm at 20. I'm going to take that down. Another thing I do want to note, and please do pay attention to this. To make your armhole bigger, yes, I did come down 2 inches because it was really sitting up high. But I can kind of eyeball where the end of like your arm socket would be. If you start going any lower to widen this hole, eventually if, the, if, if it's too, if, the, if this seam right here, where they, the, the sleeve and this, you see how there's a cross there? If this is too low, if it starts too low, then eventually the person will not be able to extend their arm up like that. If, if this sleeve is connected to a, like the beginning of the armhole, like way down here, you're not going to be able to have this range of motion. The person is going to be like, oh, crap. Maybe in this type of fabric, you might be able to get away with it, but it'll also pull up the whole shirt when you're trying to do that. Um, definitely, if you're doing like a cotton shirt or something, if that armhole starts too low, the person will not get a full range of motion. So please keep that in mind too. So you want to kind of like really distribute as you're cutting this out. So let's pull this a little bit. Okay, see how that's kind of uneven right there? So I'm going to cut this, and I'm just blending it back where it starts to look straight. See how that looks straight now? Let's remeasure it. Twenty-one. Oops, can you see that? Now I'm exactly at twenty-one. So both armholes are now equal and symmetrical. So now we can go ahead and put on the sleeves. Well, actually, I still need to sew my sleeves, but I think everybody knows how to do that. I mean, that's not, um, you know, just put them, put them together, pin them down. Um, so your half inch seam allowance, go over it with the serger. And I did tell you, I would show you what it looks like. I did already run the whole inside through my serger. So as you can see here, I, I did it with my serger. And I did the side. It just makes everything, and it cuts it for you. So you have like really nice, clean, you know what I mean? Like it just works. And then with the um, stretchy fabric, I do use... I am using the nylon strings. You could use regular cotton, but I like to just use nylon strings. That's what I use when I do swimsuits or stretchy material. And you definitely want, especially this is like a costume, I'm, I'm sure whoever's ordering it might be an entertainer or something and they need a lot of full range of motion. So you need that costume to just kind of like stretch and bounce back into place without any strings snapping. 
So I do recommend nylon string for anything stretchy or swimwear related. So after I sew my sleeves together, I'm going to turn this inside out so all the pretty glitter stuff is facing this side. Okay, and then you're going to, let's pretend this is inside out right now, I, I just have it pinned. Then you're going to take the seam of the sleeve and you're going to match it with the seam right here and that's how you're going to start off and pin it. So that way when you lift your arm, the seam is just, is just completely, it just keeps going with the sleeve. You don't have like the seam here and then the seam of the sleeve start here. Um, it just looks unprofessional and it's annoying to look at. I mean, you want your clothing to be as equal, symmetrical, and the best fit as possible. And if you just have patience with it and keep moving things around and correcting it, you will achieve that level. And I'm sure you'll be very proud of your garment. So I'm going to assemble all that and then we'll go over the buttonhole and some of the last finishings. Oh yeah, and the the shoulder to insert the shoulder pads. So yeah. okay, so here I'm um, just going over real quick how to do your own shoulder pads uh, on the cheap. Of course, like I said, you can always buy them, but you know if you want to save a few bucks, here's a way to do it, and it'll do just fine for this costume piece. So I got some of this um, foam. I do use it in my what is it called that uh the video with the hoodie the night hoodie i use that to help shape some of the pieces that are stiff and like stick out like the molding pieces so on my mannequin or on yourself you can kind of put it over your your shoulder like even a piece of paper and kind of cut out your ideal shape of um shoulder pad and then i cut two out and then what i'm going to do now i'm going to come over here to my serger and um, of course, again, if you don't have your don't have a serger like I had showed you before on my machine, you could always use a zigzag or like the overlock stitch on the normal part of your machine, and it'll do just fine. And I'm just gonna go around it. And then once more right here. Um, what I also want to do, and usually there is a seam on the store-bought ones right down the middle. So what we want to do on the ones that we make, you know, from scratch, is we want to fold it in half and get that crease there. And then with like a marker or something, just go in and make a, a little line. This will all make sense a little later when we go to attach this shoulder pad to the, sh the shoulder part of the jacket. So just please have that, both of them marked, and it'll all make sense in a little bit.